time are we live okay i can see a few comments on linkedin asking if the session is moved or uh, is this is the live uh, is, is it the correct link to join uh, so no it's uh, the session is not uh, moved anywhere ladley is very much with us in the background we'll be starting off in less than 2 minutes super happy to see all of you here let me just quickly go across platforms and check if you are streaming live and perfectly uh, if you are out there watching me please feel free to comment hi or something so that i could uh, get to know more about you uh, and can connect with you um we often see faces uh, which are very frequent in our live sessions now i know most of them personally which is a great thing uh, if you are introducing yourself you could also share about what you do so that other community members can get to know about you they can join in and more so let me just quickly check on platforms by the way uh i guess what we uh, have generally seen in the past is that in our sessions we see a mix of audience there are people who are i mean there are certain community members who very well know about defi they have been there watching us for from our inception days and there are people who have uh, you know been in our ecosystem very lately so i'll drop a quick intro of what defi is for all of you who do not know about it so um let me just share my okay uh, let me share my screen to give you a quick intro around it so one second yep. let me know if you can see it right i'll just do it in a moment yes should be able to see it right now i guess okay you can see my username as well there i'll probably skip that uh, this is the defi platform defi.tech/community this is where people come and learn data science for free they can engage with others in the community they can uh, add value to each other's lives they can solve challenges which is really great I see hi from various members. So hello, uh, uh, you know Ola. Um, I see hi from Vijaya. I'm not sure I, for some reason I'm not able to see hi from others. But uh, I mean, a very warm welcome from our end to you all. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, talking about DeFi quickly. So this is the platform. You just you can just go to DeFi or Tech backslash community to access everything that is happening on the platform. Uh, if you go to courses, right? This is where you can find a ton of self-paced courses that you can start and complete at any point in time. Okay, so you don't have to wait for our boot camps. So our boot camps are more of, uh, if I if I navigate through this section, you will find uh, that boot camps start and and uh, end on a fixed date. So for example, as of now, as we're speaking, there's seven boot camps running, and all of them have started on 15th of July and they end on 25th. But when I talk about courses, you can take them whenever you want to. Um, naturally, learning with the community is um, is is, a, is an excitement of different sorts, and it is super exciting. But even if you want to learn at your convenience that's an option that is available to you you can use this filters and play around with it um challenges is where you know let let's say you know how to build models we definitely try to bring you to that zone where you can come to uh, that arena and start competing and solving real world problem statements so this is where for example this challenge is running around uh, as i recall it's around building a deep learning model for uh, yeah gesture project uh, gesture uh, recognition under the water which is an interesting problem statement given the kind of complexities underwater ecosystem has it's not the same as the the one we see above the water and these are the live sessions that we conduct on a weekly basis and talking about these live sessions these are opportunities where we get to first of i uh, and the five team get an opportunity to connect with some really um, interesting people who are so driven to make an impact who basically decide to share their time with us and for the with the community so they create this content and they teach live on a platform So this is where we are in this particular session. Um, so talking about Ladley, I I do not need to see this because frankly I've had uh, brief conversations with him in the past, and all of them have been like uh, I was amazed to talk to him for the first time. So uh, I'll loop him in in a minute to introduce him briefly, and I think uh, he's someone I'm sure will in inspire a lot of you as well. So he comes from a, a data science background, has been an engineer in the past, and uh, he runs this particular community called as uh, Unlearning, Relearning, Unlearning. and learning relearning yeah my bad so the idea behind that community is so what it does on uh, weekends by the way and this is something that it does on a very regular basis he will try he will travel to um, the cities which are not so prominent in the indian ecosystem so he'll uh, travel to what we call as tier 3 cities in india and he will go there and educate people in rural cities and he will talk uh, talk to them he will teach them about various concepts concepts around getting hired around building solid fundamentals which in my opinion is a very noble thing to do because um at defi while we are you know impacting a global community from 150 plus countries it's still difficult for us to reach that last mile and it's because of people like ladley to be very honest that uh folks from backgrounds which are not so exposed as of now are able to learn so i'm very grateful that i'm hosting him today in the session uh, he currently works as a senior manager of data science at genpact 
So that's a brief about him on a professional level. I'll just loop him in so that he can talk a bit more about himself and introduce uh, the session. So yeah, hi Ladley. Uh, I'll let you live. People can hi. see. You. Okay. Hi all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mudit. Uh, thank you, D Five, uh, for for inviting me. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for uh, introducing me. So it it is an honor to be uh, part of the. Uh, international community so thank you very much for uh, inviting so today uh, it is uh, like a big data is something which i started around yeah in 2013 something like that so where uh, it was very new so after that i i you know moved to uh, data science so thank you very much so i'll share my experience so it is like a basic uh, from right from basics to uh, we'll have one cluster so running on on some big data okay yeah awesome yeah Uh, so over to you i'll just go to the background for those of you who are new to the session uh, a quick heads up you can ask any question that you want to around the session or even if you want any other guidance from ladley want to know more about his journey you can put that in the comment section i and my team will be there to look at your questions and we'll try to answer uh, all the questions if we can i mean we'll definitely pick the relevant ones but you can start putting them uh, as and when you come across them so yeah over to you ladley yeah. okay i'll share i'll share my screen can you see my screen Yes, yes, it is visible now. Yes. All right. Uh, so I think this is like a old topic. Uh, there, there is no new, new in the big data world. So the data, uh, it's it's not a new topic. So you have heard uh, many other places. So I'll start with. Uh, so about me, I, you already know. So just to give a background. So I work for Genpack. Um, so I we have a community called Unlearning and Relearning. So so my wife and I. Uh, so we go to villages we go to rural rural areas and spread awareness about um, about climate change about uh, how to build their profile how to improve their communication skills all of that stuff and i'm also a co uh, speaker and co organizer at um, hyderabad python user community so that's about it so agenda is very simple what is data so how data is evolved over a period of time so there are v's in big data frameworks so how do you process the data how do you store a single user versus a team how do how do how do you make sure that you you make things faster uh, so hadoop and spark working together and some of the real use cases so wherever i i go i i spread the awareness about the climate change and I'll, i'll add that flavor uh, into this and then how do you get started quickly if you want to start uh, big data without any any hurdle so as the name itself indicates there are there are many things right so you need to have a server you need to install many libraries and all so how do you get start quickly uh, and then and get into uh, our big data so I'll, i'll talk about that uh, so let's let's go with the data okay <clears throat> so we know the, in, data uh, actually data is a plural word data is a, a singular word but people call it both uh, in a singular people use it both as a singular and plural so so it's like a facts right so whatever you have the information so it could be numerical categorical any of the information so for instance like for cricket players like top all time power top batsman in the world so how do you how do you know so data describes right the the way they played hist- historically so all of those information are captured and stored that's called data right so it's like a fact statistics which happened in the past or which might come in the future right so this is just a information which is stored some place It's, it's, it could be any value, right? So it could be qualitative, quantitative, or technical. So any, 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 any sense, right? So this is just a basic information about the data. The information, it's like a information. Uh, so now, how data is evolved? So especially from uh, 2010, uh, if you see here, uh, before before getting into it, so just understand whatever we we store, right? The information of what you are seeing, uh, the PPT, which is Uh, which is which is you you are seeing now is a uh, google slide uh, behind the scene everything is stored in zeros and ones so whatever you see the pictorial representation the tool like a google slide ha- has enabled us uh, to see what you are seeing in, in the form of a, a, a high level language but behind the scene this ppt might be let's say uh, 2 mb or 1 mb um, which is which which uh, is like a megabyte right so megabyte like 1 mb let's say Like PPT is about one MB. Behind the scene, it has stored in the information in the form of zeros and one. Uh, so 
bit is one or zero it's like a one bit zero or one uh, nibble four bits byte kilobyte megabyte gigabyte so gb we know all all of these phones uh, you know we have a very high end phones now they support all gigabytes of memory we can we can store in uh, earlier it was very difficult but now with the with the uh, with lesser price uh, with the advancement in the technologies right so we have we could see all of these so this is just a uh, like where we are right now this this was actually a two years ago uh, uh, graph but what you see uh, the exponential increase uh, in, in the data set right in the data what 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 we have seen uh, like we are all connected uh, somehow to the internet and we all generate the data and the exponential increase from 2010 before that there was like hardly anything exponential increase what you've seen uh, over year and year uh, is 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 amazing, right? So because we are all connected to the internet, and obviously uh, each and everyone has the device. We all generate the data. So the entire world data. So by by twenty twenty fifth, right? So it will be one eighty one uh, zettabyte. So zettabyte is like a hundred and hundred thousand twenty four exabyte. Again, if you look it back, so it's like a it's it's a very difficult calculation. So this is this is the amount of data which uh, we are forecasting, which we foresee uh, by twenty twenty fifth. So and you see this, this is an exponential increase. So this is what just uh, with this a massive amount of data. So obviously when you have the data at your uh, in the digital world, so they are all data storing at some place. So you have many opportunities, right? So business opportunities. So so I'll, I'll just give a background. Uh, how this data is evolved. So during 1970s, this is just a my assumption. Okay, so 1970s to 90s, we had structured data. So in, in the form of spreadsheet, Excel, we also had databases, and we out of those databases, we used to uh, create dashboards. We used to analyze the data. Data science is again, I work in data science, but data science is not a. It's like a term coined recently, not recently, but maybe 10, 10, 15 years ago. But uh, actually understanding of the data, statistics, all of this information are there uh, more than 50 years ago. It's been, it's, it's been there. Uh, but yeah, whenever you have the data, so you analyze it, you understand, you try to have an inference about the data, right? So to make a better decision. So we had the data, but most of the data was um, the structured. It was in the form of Excel. Uh, it was like a column and rows um, till 90s. Uh, then came dot com era, so where uh, applications started migrating to, uh, you know, we had our websites uh, that that called dot com era, right? So we had search engines like Google. Uh, we started developing web applications like uh, Gmail, Yahoo Mail, something like that. We also started building like enterprise applications like banks. Earlier we used to they used to maintain records, right? In uh, in pen and paper. Uh, so they they started converting towards uh, website enterprise applications like where they can they can do a transactions and then the evolution of e-commerce websites all of those are e-commerce then simple applications web applications like a gmail yahoo mail where one application cannot communicate to another application that's the web application enterprise application like a like a flip card or uh, e-commerce web websites where the one application can communicate to another application so all of these started and then we started getting some sort of unstructured data as well uh, during this time, um, and that's how we again we we had a Java J2W evolution, and then the, the open source tools. Uh, the, when when data was coming, obviously, uh, and then the technology advancement uh, helped us in understanding the data better and evolving the data better, right? So this was this was the era uh, till 2004. Uh, this again my assumption. And we we had a logs data during this time when we have an application hosted on a server. So obviously each and every activities are recorded. Those some sort of semi structured data. So this is what uh, you know uh, era was from 1991 uh, to 2004. Um, then came 2005. Then came the social media, right? So that's where the massive. Uh, if you if you see uh, if you see here here also, right? So they actually started from here. So massive amount of data exponential growth in the data is, is happened because of uh, a huge giant social medias so Arcoot was there before i had an account in Arcoot, which, which is no more now so we have twitter we we had a facebook coming in this this time and then then again um so what we we used to delete uh, in 
before 2010 and there, there, there used to be some sort of a data where like logs data we used to archive those those information uh, they become very important uh, during this time um, with coming of hadoop with coming of uh, MapReduce, uh, some of the open source technologies tech giants like google microsoft they they introducing some of the frameworks like earlier till here uh, most of the softwares, like advanced softwares, uh, they used to be like a licensed software, like big companies like IBM, all of those, they, they used to have their own, in, internally they were all licensed tools. Uh, with, with the evolution of the data, with the evolution of technology, open source uh, started coming. People around the world started contributing, big giants, big companies, they, they started creating the frameworks, uh, free frameworks, open source frameworks. That's where there were, there were many opportunities. Um, so then again, mobile world, sensors, a personalized information like right? you whatever i like when when i go to ghana.com or any other uh, song i want to listen so it is personalized to me whenever i open my e-commerce website is personalized to me so th that's where uh, data analysis data science many things started coming and then obviously when these devices are connected to the internet they all generate data every second and and that's where uh, data data is uh, evolved so i'll just uh, you know if, if you look at uh, Facebook by now, if, if it generates uh, five to te five to ten terabytes of data per day, and Twitter uh, it, it it has two hundred plus millions uh, every day, right? So and uh, and and so YouTube YouTube generate thousands of uh, minutes uh, per 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 minute. Uh, you know you have thousands of hours uh, data content uploaded. So if you just Google, you'll understand what what the um, the scale I, I, I'm talking about and. And to support these this kind of massive amount of data, you need the technology advancement also. So that's where the frameworks like Hadoop, uh, frameworks like Apache Spark, uh, frameworks like cloud, cloud, cloud K, uh, like um, I mean the cloud infrastructures like Amazon, Amazon uh, Evolve, uh, Google uh, Cloud, and uh, Microsoft. There are other other tons of cloud. So the but the early days where uh, cloud started, which, which was famous, was uh, Amazon AWS. So this is what they provided the infrastructure to store, uh, easily accessible infrastructure to store, to store the data uh, on demand. You can increase and decrease, uh, decrease the, the, the need of your, uh, uh, you know, you can increase the scale uh, based on your need. So this is how data is evolved. Um, now, you know, next, what, what will happen again? There are technologies that, that there are again uh, related to climate change and sensors, all of those information, smart cities. Again, we are all moving towards a uh, next generation where we again uh, massively generate the data. So this is what uh, so far. Um, so again, this is very important. Uh, when I started uh, Hadoop, when I started my journey of Hadoop, we had only uh, velocity um, and volume and um, variety. Only three Vs were there now. Uh, with with advancement in the tool, with the advancement in the technologies, um, so we we added these these extra Vs. So volume, as I told, Facebook generates five to ten petabytes of data uh, per day, and um, that much of volume and speeds. Every second, you you know, every hour, you know, you have thousands of uh, hours uploaded. Uh, sorry, every minute you have thousands of hours uploaded videos on on YouTube. So that um, that speed, the data is coming. And variety. Uh, so if you if you go to Facebook, so you can post uh, post uh, uh, you know you can write, you can upload video, you can upload photos. So structured and structured data. So this is this, these all the these were there. Um, now you know the value is something as I told we uh, in, in when I started uh, in my journey as a as a Java developer. So we used to have logs like there used to be one application. Uh, which is which was an enterprise uh, job in EJB uh, JW application. So where we used to delete archive logs, like it was an application where user comes and do some sort of uh, activities, purchase something. Uh, it's like a permissioning system. Uh, so what we used to do is we used to archive their history. We used to archive their uh, logs, logs data, whatever the activity he has done, the user has done. Now that is like a fuel. Uh, that data what. We used to archive before. Now it's like a fuel. They to to personalize a user, to understand him better, to to uh, to ma to market the right product to him or to sell the right product to him. So that's like a fuel. The data is a new fuel. You call it. It's like basically log data, the activity data. Like you generate a massive amount of value from 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 that data. So that's that's where um, the value came into picture. And yeah, so 
veracity and trusting the data so obviously the you you the re- recently uh, the trend which is going on the twitter trend right so the deal of the facebook with uh, elon musk so is the trust trust factor right so how how do you verify and validity validity of the of the data is also important i mean it got delayed i mean based on the information what what we know it got delayed because of some 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 accounts right some sort of a percentage of account so the r- reliability and the trust of the data is also uh, became very important um that's again is every organization do that so you you rely on and trust and verify the data so that's the another we has been introduced uh, so don't know what how many ways it, it is going to come but this is as now as of now um these are the big we's uh, big data we's uh, which which uh, it's like a basic basic entry level when somebody starts journey of big data so this is what they they go through um so again so as, as i told um, when when you have a, a massive amount of data coming in companies like google companies like yahoo companies like big giant very tech giants company they started open sourcing their internal projects they uh, and they started inviting um, other communities like group uh, group of developers to contribute to contribute to that frameworks that's where hadoop evolved um, and then apache spark evolved these are the free open source frameworks uh, and then earlier what used to happen um that they we used to have open source frameworks earlier also uh, unfortunately people don't uh, used to use it because of the reliability or because of the trust if somewhere somewhere stuck somewhere there there um, wasn't much support from the community now if you if you start using apache spark let's say it's a open source framework now if you have if you're facing any issues and if you just post uh, your issue uh, on the under github uh, issues right so you 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 will get the response in, in minutes and your issues will be resolved in minutes it's it's all because uh, around the world the open source developers open source communities um, they they start you know responding uh, because of that so companies started adopting uh, open source why should they pay huge amount of licenses right so uh, to to have something like a hadoop hadoop is 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 like that what hadoop does is not new it it is there uh, it it is there like for long years like so many years in in big companies but it became famous when it it has been introduced it started people started adopting small companies started adop- adopting when they have a big amount of data to process so because it's all because of the open source because of the open source uh, nature people started adopting and there are the very big frameworks uh, hadoop is very famous Apache Spark is very famous. I worked uh, uh, in Apache Spark extensively. Apache Flink is also very famous. Uh, Hive is very famous. Kafka is very famous, and there are uh, hundreds of frameworks, and um, and you you can use to process a massive amount of data. So, Mudit, do I have to stop anywhere, or should I uh, continue? Are you there, Mudit? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you can continue. That's okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's let's take a let's take a background. Like, um, let's take a step back. So, what happens is uh, you have a, a your your presentation. So, you have a mobile computer. What what you see, what you are seeing right now, the the PPT is in front of your computer. So that's that's where uh, that's where the uh, presentation layer lies. Um, and then whatever you're streaming, I am talking I am talking here in India in Hyderabad uh, in front of my system. If you are somewhere part of the part of the world other part of the india or some, somewhere in the part of the world so what is happening is someone is taking all the information which is there in front of me and 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 processing and giving it at your your end right so how does this happening it it's it's basically it's all connected world so there is a processing layer there is an application layer which is taking that information and giving it in front of you so it's like a, a communication from one end to another end so whenever you have applications like uh, citibank.com or um, any other uh, facebook.com what happens is so whatever information you 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 type in or you you enter uh, that will be taken care by uh, some of the processing layers like java .net application layer and then um, so you write some business logic there and then data is stored permanently Uh, in databases so this is this is the flow of a uh, of general processing right so this is how the information flows and and stores permanently in the in, in the databases so so here you use html javascript there, there are many uh, uh, front end technologies used here you use django java jira to process the, to take this massive amount of data and then uh, and process it apply some sort of business logic 
and store permanently in the databases. This is the end-to-end -end, uh, information. This is the end-to-end -end information. Uh, so this is how it, it, it goes. So let's take a, before before uh, we go to Hadoop or before we go to big data rights. Let's understand what is what exactly. So what why the idea is very simple. Uh, so you you the big data ideas uh, the, how we are we are doing all of this is, is very very simple. So you you have a single user um, so who is running who has uh, an operating system and um, single system right. So you are running everything in, in like in, like imagine you are forming a team like you have a. Uh, you have a project coming in, and you have one person working, working, working on that project, um, and then there is no uh, resilient for that, right? If that person is sick, and, and you cannot, um, you cannot. Uh, the, I mean, the work is work, work get hampered. Sick. There is no, there is no um, further. Uh, there will be delay in the in the project, and and if the data gets increased, right? If the workload get increased, obviously he cannot handle. Uh, that's a single person. So how about having a team, right? So you have a team leader. Um, and assigns the task to all of the team leaders. Um, sorry, the, the junior folks. The team leader assigns the task to jun junior folks. If one of the person resigns, um, he can. Uh, the other person can take the take, take his workload. If one of the person is 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 sick, um, other person can take his workload. So the idea is very simple. The big data, massive amount of data, the Hadoop or Spark, what what we are talking about, it is very simple. So earlier days, what we have. The traditional way of data processing is a, a single server, a single like a single user. So if that server crashes, if, then there is no. Of course, there, there are like a disaster recalls. There are many things, but um, think about this: the, the data scales massively, uh, or, or some some issues came. Um, so because of that, it's like a single point of failure. So once once that is stopped, so all the applications are stopped. So versus you you have a, a team um, so which is resilient it's not a single point of failure so it's like a collaborative effort big data or hadoop or sparks or nothing but it's like a collaborative effort so you have more than one person or more than one server so you have massive amount of data stored in some place and you have many servers uh, processing capabilities to process process the data so simple as that so this this is how it goes uh, so imagine working as a single user uh, in a single operating system Versus, um, so you have a, like four or five people working on a different different system. They all collaborate together and then give a work. So this will be obviously the faster uh, versus compared to uh, having a single uh, single user, which is like a single point of failure. So this is this is the simple idea what big data follows. So same how Hadoop works. So you you have uh, uh, you have many servers. Servers obviously will have a disks like to store the data. And and Spark, so Hadoop is nothing but imagine like a it's like a storage, uh, like a database. It's like a big data storage. You store the data on Hadoop. So what what happens is you take some part of the disk from here, some part of the disk from here, some part of the disk from here. Again, there are things like a replication factor. If this server goes down, some of the some of the this information is replicated to this server. So those those things are taken care. So idea is you store. You you take the uh, you take many servers as many as you want and and then you store the data you partition the data the the way it works is like a, if you know divide and conquer algorithm right so you have a massive amount of data you divide them uh, in, in in these these information let's say you have a hundred lines uh, and then um, you store first thirty lines here and and then thirty one to six, uh, sixty or seventy lines here and maybe let's say seventy one to a hundred lines here. So this, like, I mean, you are you are actually dividing that file, um, actual file you are dividing um, and storing the part of the file in, in various machines. That's a disk, and and on top of that you have RAM and you have processing capabilities like you have processors, RAM and to process that data, right? So that's where Spark comes into picture. Spark is like a it uses your cores uh, and RAM to process that data. Uh, and then all of this information is controlled by master. So master knows if you have hundred lines of files, master knows where is that first thirty lines are stored, where are the um, uh, next uh, thirty one to seventy lines are stored, and then where are the seventy ones to uh, hundred lines are stored. Master knows this. Again, there is a uh, information like you have a backup for the master. There will be a backup for the master. So what you do is you don't connect to any of these servers. So all you do is all of these things are um, like abstract to you. 
so that's where these open source famous like hadoop uh, spark does you don't have to worry how things are working internally so these frameworks are installed on these servers hadoop and spark are installed on these servers they work together uh, to process that massive amount of data so because you if you process that uh, big data let's say uh, so we are going to have a, a 16 gb data processing if you process i'll show you live demo so if you process in one server uh, versus processing that data uh, splitting the data uh, actually partitioning that data into into various servers and and you know um, collecting the data and processing this data let's say line number 1 to 30 stored here right so you you process only that part of it. you use this servers cores and uh, memory or the ram uh, to process only that data and here only that data here only that the corresponding data and you you get the you share the information only to aggregated information to the master so all of this happens seamlessly without any without any uh, problem um, so that's where the sparks are so imagine Hadoop is like a disk storage, which is like a stored on, on uh, um, uses uh, your hard disk, and Spark is like a processing. So it uses RAM and, and, and the processing power of your your server. This is the core fundal, fundamental um, fundamental about big data. So the demo which I'm going to show is 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 a Kaggle data set. Kaggle uh, is a competitive platform, Google's uh, Google company, so data science competitive platform. So the way I did is it's a 16 GB data. So I copied that data to EC2, and then from there, um, so I have uh, uh, I copied again. Data is downloaded to EC2 from EC2 to S3. What is S3? S3 is a um, is like a uh, it's like a storage, like a Hadoop uh, Hadoop. Like you imagine, like it's a Hadoop, and then I have EC2 servers. EC2 is nothing but Elastic Cloud. It's like a RAM. Uh, it's like they are servers, three nodes cluster. All of these things are installed there. I'll show you uh, with, with the demo. So before that, I'll, I'll show you what data is all about. Um, it's the data. I'll actually show you. Um, this is the data, American Express um, Kaggle Live. This is a live competition which is going on. Um, so you can download the data. So data looks like this. So you have, uh, it's like a 16 GB data. 16.39 um, GB data, and then um, so you can you can process this data um, using using uh, this is the data which I'm talking about. The objective of this data is to predict uh, you have predict card information whether whether uh, a pers particular person uh, will pay uh, uh, on time or not, like whether he'll default uh, if he's gonna default. So there will be follow up or there will be some uh, you know next steps. Decisions will be taken. So there is a code. Um, simple running on simple single machine code so I'll, I'll start running that parallelly so let i'll show you so this is uh, this is where so this is again um, so you can also if you are uh, interested to a data science this is the best platform you don't have to install anything so this provides uh, a server uh, some high end server so you can you can install so it's like up to 20 GB information you can store um, and then you have a RAM. So I'll, I'll show you this. This is just a simple data. So what I'm going to do is this is like a single machine. It's, it's like a machine which, which has some sort of a RAM and some sort of CPU. And so you, you use all of this information to process this data. So just to, I'm just reading this data. Okay. So I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm just reading. This is the Python script. The data is stored here. Um, data is stored here. If you see here, this is 16.39 16 uh, GB data is stored here. So this is running. It is. It is not. It, it hasn't ran. Um, so it's still running. So let it run. Um, before that, what I did is the data. What you see here. This is. Um, uh, I can download the data. I can um, easily. I'll show you. I moved the data from here. You see, I cannot download to, to my local laptop and, and, and again transfer 16 GB is a huge amount of data. So what I did is uh, using this Kaggle API, you, what I did is I manually downloaded the data to you. Uh, so this like connection is lost. Okay. Uh, so basically, this is the EC2 server. 
EC2 is Elastic Cloud Server. It's a Google Cloud Server. So I've downloaded the data here. And from here, uh, I'll show you what I'm trying to say here. So basically, the data was there in the Kaggle. Um, from Kaggle, uh, I downloaded the data here. Uh, here on, on this server. So which is, which is I'll show you. Um, So this is this is live work, guys. Uh, so I'll show you everything in front of you. Uh, so you can use this these tools, uh, and they are very easily easily navig navigable. And... Turn slow because I think things are running. Okay. So this machine, uh, this is the this is the place uh, where I kept the data. Copy this. Let me close all. Let me open the terminal once again. All right. So I connect connect to that. So from from my laptop, I've connected to. This server, Ubuntu server. So this is the place. How did I download the data? Yeah. So I, as I told, so there are a few commands. Um, using, using this command, uh, in this in this server, I've installed um, installed uh, AWS AWS CLI, and I created an instance. Instance is the, this server. This is the server. I'll just give a background. Those who are new to this uh, AWS. So this is the server. Which which has some properties like you can easily create a, a server which has some properties some some sort of a RAM some sort of a disk right so this this is the server um, with with which t four t two dot x large so which has some sort of a RAM some sort of disk like you can easily create you can launch if you have AWS account this is an Amazon account so you, uh, so I've stored the data I've stored by installing all of these libraries all of these libraries I've stored the data. And from here, using this API, Kaggle API, sorry if I'm navigating here and there. So using the Kaggle API, using the Kaggle API, I downloaded the data here. Data is here. It was in the zip file. And then from here, uh, because this is again a single machine. What you see here is a single machine. It's not a distributed. So from here, I, I, I moved the data to S3. What is S3? S3 is a simple uh, storage service. So uh, Amazon storage service is like a Hadoop. Uh, you can store terabytes of petabytes of data in Hadoop, uh, right? Similarly, uh, in S3, you can store terabytes and petabytes of data. So that's where I stored um, in S3. So far, what I did is I showed you still here. After that, what it is, um, so I, I, I have to install all of these, right? So to process process these this amount of data. So I have to install uh, Spark, I have to install all of these libraries. Uh, manually. So instead of that, what I can use, I can use something like a Cloudera. I can use um, Amazon, um, Amazon's EMR cluster. EMR is nothing but Elastic MapReduce. So where from here, S3, I read the data. Again, I do the processing. So I'll show you where exactly I stored the data uh, after, after after moving data, right? So I'll show you so far. S3 is uh, again a uh, simple storage service. Sorry about the network. I think it is, there are many things are running, so I think it's because of that. So for this uh, DeFi workshop, so this is where the data is. Uh, so this is, yeah. So I think it got compressed. So obviously this is this is the data we have. So so far, from here, Kaggle to EC2, EC2 is Elastic Cloud Company. It's like a server. It's like a regular machine. Um, I copied the data to S3. From S3, what I have to do is I have to read and do some sort of a computation. Uh, before this, let's see where where we are. Still, it is running. So this is the data, and this is a single super and high end server. Yeah, so it is running, and then if you see here, uh, we got some error. Uh, it got restarted. We got 
it, it, it wasn't able to allocate the memory. So it, we got restarted. So, I mean, it got restarted. So, I mean, basically we can't read that massive amount of data in a single server. This, this is a drawback. Um, so that's where, uh, what happened is there is another alternate view. So some of the community folks again, uh, in Kaggle, what they did is, uh, they have uploaded, uh, a small data of this, which is around, around, I think, uh, four GB. So what we'll do is it's like, a, they did some optimization, uh, optimization to the, to the same data. So again, um, I will not do, okay. It has restarted. So I'll have to start again from the beginning. Yeah, you can see, right. The memory was not there. The server has, it, 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 uh, it was hundred percent utilized. So it has restarted. So let's start like instead of, instead of using that massive amount of data, 16 GB data. So let's use a uh, four GB data. Let's see what server says, right? So single server, this is a single server from Google, which is well optimized server. Uh, so we'll use this data. Mm, yeah. So let it run. Uh, I'll show you what so far, what, what happened? So we were here, 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 the data is here. Okay. So from here, I have to launch EMR. So what I did is, uh, EMR is again a service, um, in, 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 uh, service in, there are hundreds of services what Amazon provides. So here it's like in one click, you can, you can create, a, uh, create a, a server, you can like a EMR cluster. So here, what happened is I created a three node, three node cluster. So one is master and two are uh, slaves. So what, what I'm trying to say here is, um, so I'll, I'll go to this, we will go to this part, we will go to this part. So here, imagine instead of having a one person, this is like a, this example, what you see here, this is, oh, it, it, it ran now. Okay. I'll read this also. All right. I'll read this. Okay, this will again take because it has to merge the data. Let it let it run. So what I'm trying to say here is like instead of having one person, so you are using three people here. So here there are three machines, three machines. The machine names are one. They are, they are three machines which are working together uh, to to do some sort of task. What is that task? So just reading the data and then some sort of doing some sort of joining. So I'm not building any complex logic. There's nothing like a it's like a simple logic. So, but, uh, it's like a three, three servers are connected, uh, but everything is abstract for you. So EMR, what EMR has done is, so everything is abstract. Uh, so we don't have to, we don't have to manually do anything. So they are all connected together. They are working together to solve your problem. Um, so they, they work together. Whenever you give them the task, you just have to give the task to master. So master will again distribute the task to, uh, the, its slaves. And then they work slave nodes, they work together and then they do some, whatever the task you do, maybe let's say joining or maybe uh, some sort of shuffling or building a machine learning model. And then they, uh, they give the response back to, back to master. So what is the job of master? Master aggregates the data, right? So it has to aggregate, uh, randomly everyone give response to the, uh, response to the master. So master has to be very clever and he has to aggregate the data from all the slaves. And then finally report out the result to client client is like a, whatever we are, we are connected, right? So we will show you what, what is the client meaning? So imagine like you, you, you are building a project. So you, you are running a project. So you, you, you are a business person. Um, so you have a, some task to task to maybe let's say you are building some sort of machine learning model. So you give tasks to your, your, your team lead team lead again, divides the task to sub teams and sub team, they, they do their work and then respond to the share the results with with the team lead team lead again has to share uh, to the client client or maybe his, to his boss so that's that's the that's the analogy so i'll show you uh, so what i'll do is I'll, I'll connect to the master so i'll copy this okay i think i copied i have all the things required All right, uh, unlearning, relearning. Okay, 
and downloads. So I'll, I'll move to running relearning big data. Yeah. So I have this file. It's like a this PM permissioning file is is like a the password to connect to that server. So I'll paste command. It should work. Oh, here I am. So what I did is from my laptop, I connected to the master. So master, I connected to the master IP address. So there are three people working. So I, I don't have to worry anything. So it's like a same server, right? It's, you you feel like a only one server. You you don't feel like there are three people who are working behind the scene. So for a for a business leader, um, for a business person uh, or, or a CEO of a company, he doesn't have to interact with. Uh, uh, he doesn't have to know who, who are all there in the team, right? All he has to know is his his direct reporting. Uh, so for for us, like I have, we have to work on something. So let me start. So everything is installed. Uh, so whenever you if you use use uh, frameworks like uh, or the distribution like EMR, you don't have to install anything. Everything is uh, everything is installed for you by Spark. PySpark is like a spark on top of Python. So, so it will start. It does many things behind the scene. So I have a simple code. The code, what you see here, what we have here, which again, if you see here, while joining, again, it threw an exception. While joining, it threw an exception. So again, it, it, it restarted. So you can see the disadvantages of uh, using a single server. I would not say this is a big data. I'll not say the current. I I, I can say that uh, maybe five years ago, or six years ago, this 16 GB could be a big data, but not anymore. But uh, you can see this this server, single server, uh, which is a Google server, um, which is failing again and again. So Spark started. Um, I have simple code again. I'll, I'll show you what this code is doing. It is reading the data. It is reading the data from S3, uh, which is uh, training data. Simple command. So Spark, Apache Spark is is, is developed by uh, it developed at a University of Berkeley. Mm, so it, it is developed by PhD some of the PhD students. So it, again, it's open source framework. It's quite famous. Uh, if you are uh, enthusiast about about big data, learning towards big data, Spark without Spark you will not be able to, mm, you know. Yeah, so Spark is something uh, every, everyone has uh, in, in their uh, tech stack. So if they are working on a big data, so what I'm doing is again, there's the same file which which is which is stored at at this place, which I think I've showed you guys. I'll show you one more time. Uh, yeah, so this is this is the data which is stored in my S3 bucket. I'm reading the data. Uh, I'm just counting. Um, so if you, this is exactly the data. There is. Uh, there, there is no change in the what you what you call. Um, so if you see this, this data set, what I, I was using the end raw data set in a single machine, um, high end single machine. So it was not able to read and it restarted. It went out of memory, it restarted the server. So again, what we had to do. So we had to read another data. So which is a parquet version um, to, to do that. And then we read this data. And then we tried joining again. We got some memory exception, right? Uh, we again the kernel restarted, the notebook restarted. So basically, we had a, we had to face um, the memory issues. Imagine the 16 for 16 GB data. So you are facing this. How about one terabyte, one petabyte? So you can't buy a bigger, bigger, bigger server, right? So instead, you need to have smaller, smaller servers. Ask them to work together to solve a problem. And have one master, and there will be again uh, replications for the master. There will not be any single point of failure for masters. There will be replications. Have a master, so ask the master to give the work to slaves, and then slaves use. They do. They, it's like a divide and conquer. So you divide the data, and then do um, you know some sort of logic sorting. Let's say divide and conquer sort, sort sorting merge sort something like that, and then you you divide at a you go at a row level, right? So you go at a two value comparison. Uh, and then you sort and then go to its, it's like when you draw a tree of a merge sort uh, you will see you you find a middle and then left side of the tree you draw a sort and right side of the tree you sort again you you go to sub uh, right left side of the tree again you find a middle pa, middle value 
and then you go till you find a two two values right so it's like the same way uh, you know you divide the data and then ask them to work all of those data points that you will have some servers ask them to work together so this is i i i, I was able to read the raw data and you can see the count uh, i was also able to uh, okay let me also let me also read some other data file right? and in in less time um, in less time i was able to read the data it's some other data set see these these are all uh, actions stages data is shuffling happening there are stages stages will come when data shuffles around and uh, let me join these two data points um yeah so let me copy this command so i did this i joined this and i can just count oh, sorry can just count um so you, you you get you're getting the power right the power of uh, it's like a working together as a team simple 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 term so you you get the output um so let's uh, let's wait so i'll i'll give some more uh, background information I, i'll tell you i'll tell you what all these machines uh, you can actually go to ec2 servers ec2 servers and see Uh, anyway i think no, no need to no need to see that so but yeah so i'll show you how to again emr you can easily create emr if, if there are many documents elastic map produce how to create you can choose you all you have to do is you have to have a one aws account and you can use any of their services so let let's see if that run it's still running because it is a job yeah so finally it was able to join i can also see the data if i just Uh, do a, a show command. Okay, we have type df underscore train train dot show. Although it has like a, it is it is like it has many columns. You won't be able to see actual data um, because it has around one uh, seventy plus columns. This is a big data, right? So you won't be able to see. But uh, I'll I'll show you. how how the data looks like we yeah, have these all, all the operations you can do many things like you can you can join you can do group by the what are, what are the massive massive operations like you can grouping the data joining the data cleansing the data deleting uh, dropping the null values so these are the very complex operations so these are very very complex operation so using if you are using one machine so it, it becomes very difficult so that's reason you have spark uh, famous like spark so they they work together uh, the, you you install spark on all of these machines so the way you you can do if you want to do by yourself you can have three actual virtual machines the uh, when when i was in when i was in the second organization which is tcs so where we had actual local systems manual local system where we installed all of these uh, hadoop uh, manually uh, everything was manually installed so we 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 did not have the luxury uh, of of luxury of creating the cluster in minutes so if you if you use the emr right emr cloudera or any of these distributions so you can spin up the cluster in minutes um, in minutes you can you can create a cluster so but uh, you see the power right so all of these things are uh, underneath uh, like abstract for you so all you have to do is write code like a regular code what you, what you are doing like python code if you are a data scientist if you are using if you are using scikit learn any other jupyter notebook you write the same code here similar code to do your data analytics um and then underneath uh, these frameworks like emr these frameworks like cloudera they take care of all of these managing the um, uh, admin stuff um yeah this is how the data looks like uh, 20 rows but uh, it's a massive you don't be able to interpret it uh, yeah so this is how it is so yeah so you can you can write more code you can write group by you can join the data you can write a, a machine learning model so many things many things you can you, you can do so and let me just show you the columns so yeah many columns it has many many columns so it is it is very difficult so to to to, to interpret or to use the single server this is what i just want to say um on the big data part so far so far in our journey what happened uh, so we were able to download the data set move to the ec2 why did i move to ec2 i can't i download to directly to my laptop yeah you can do directly download to my laptop again from my laptop 
uh, to transfer like i need a speed internet like 16 gb data uh, is, is, is <laughs> for my internet it takes time so that's the reason i used amazon ac2 amazon ac2 is again a single server so i downloaded it. it's like a server so actually it's like my laptop but single machine from there i moved to s3 um, and then i use these processing powers spark is where it, it is installed here all of these things are it's called emr elastic map reduce cluster so in one or two minutes you would be able to launch these clusters um, of your choice how many nodes you whichever the nodes you want um, and then one master two nodes i have and i was able to count which which i was not able to do here um, i was able to i was able to do in, 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 uh, in emr so so far um, journey is is this um, big data but as i told um, so i'll take questions and all as i told i'll not wherever i go i'll, I'll spread the word about climate change um, i'll talk about that and then and i also talk about next step i'll also talk about uh, see yes, it, it it becomes very difficult right so you have to pay pay for these uh, these machines if you are a fresher if you are a beginner uh, so how how do you learn so one of the thing is uh, amazon again provides all you have to have a, a debit or credit card you can create account in amazon mm, you can have a machines micro machines smaller machines with with a limited uh, capability um, you can work on that that's one option the second option is um, again you can use uh, some of the things like a, some things like a google google kaggle so you can also install spark here um, you can also do the coding uh, here also uh, they also provide some servers freely you don't have to install anything that's the second option third option is if you have a good good system maybe 16 gb ram something like that uh, then you can also do PySpark installation in your laptop and then uh, do mass, they write the code. So good part about uh, writing this code, Spark code or Flink code or MapReduce, uh, sorry, MapReduce, which is no more there. Uh, the code which runs for um, the same code, what what you, what you saw here, running here, right? So you can write the same code. Um, I mean, you can have one, maybe let's say one GB of data and and then run this code. And the code which ran for one GB data can also be used to process maybe 100, 100 terabyte or petabyte of data, or maybe more than that. It's like a, all you have to do is you have to have a, a scalable infrastructure. Uh, but the beauty is beauty about Spark and all. You you feel like you're running on you're working on one system, uh, but underneath, uh, thanks to thanks to this uh, community like a DeFi community where they are connecting data data scientists together. Thanks to communities. Uh, like open source communities, they created these frameworks. So where they take care of these heavy loads, right? Uh, connecting these machines. How do you connect? One machine is here. One machine is here. How do you connect? How do you sync them? They or a network, the data transfer between them. How, this this is a very challenging things. Thanks to the communities. So they thanks to the world they, they, they developers, right? So they contribute freely without any without any uh, amount, right? So they contribute to um, to contribute to the uh, frameworks like developing the frameworks like spark so you don't have to worry um, i'll tell you what you have to do is so one of the option is you can uh, you can use aws you can also use kaggle you can install in your laptop the other option which uh, which which i like uh, is, is something like a uh, you can also have a community edition of databricks uh, I'm, I'm i'm not paid for to, to promote this this uh, company databricks uh, they are the people who actually developed uh, after passing out when they were the, the founders of spark apache spark they were at university of berkeley they were doing phds uh, the moment they came out of um, they developed the framework called apache spark and they open source to the uh, to the world people started contributing but they have their own company uh, called databricks they extensively work on uh, work on this so what happens is you can also create a cluster here you can all you have to do is you can can have a simple community edition of the account so they provide 16 gb ram so you you can create a code so this is the same code uh, spark code um, i'll show you the spark code i think this is this is the same code so in in minutes you can you can launch cluster um, compute you can in in minutes you can you can create a cluster which is already there now d5 workshops i created so one cluster you can easily create it's a free you don't have to pay anything create click if you click click on create clusters automatically create so again it's a behind the scene everything is 
there you don't have to worry so all you have to do is you come here and then attach that server and this notebook is like a login it's like a you like a general gmail so you don't have to install anything so everything is here um you can also practice practice here this is the air quality index uh, uh data this is a spark code the same code works for terabits See, uh, let's say i have air air quality data which is in mb actually um so which is which i have stored in, in on on, on uh, databricks cloud server uh, at this location at this location um, and then i've written a code end to end code which has machine learning also uh, and the same code code if the data is same let's say if i have a data sitting at hadoop or s3 uh, somewhere which is like a maybe um, 100 terabytes of data the same code can work all you have to do is you have to have a distributed machine not like a single cluster you have to have a cluster cluster is nothing but collection of machines you cannot work on single machine uh, but the code works the beauty of spark is the code is distributed among those servers that's where uh, the beauty of spark is uh, so I'll, i'll i'll go to the climate change um, so climate change uh, before before i i explain this this quality air quality index i'll just do a uh, this um ipcc is is uh, uh is like an entire world of, in, including india is, is i part of uh, in india is also part of ipcc so intergovernment uh, panel on climate change so it's like a, it's like a group of people uh, around the world like all all people are thinking about and taking steps uh, towards climate change so what is happening here is um, we you know what what in, in if you are in india so you see that i am hyderabad i uh, last week was like last to last weeks massive rain many area there were floods in india last in few, 15 days ago so almost majority of the states we we had floods the reason for that um is is climate change there is a change in the shift in the climate right uh, so we have scrutinized our earth by using this revolutionary um industrialization because of the industrialization uh, emission of this Uh, carbon dioxide the global uh, warming the earth is getting warmer and warmer and warmer uh, so we have crossed um, 1.2 degree the average temperature of the earth uh, so is like we have crossed about uh, 1.2 degree uh, so and then uh, we are about to cross in, in by 2031 we are about to cross 1.5 um, degree so that's the uh, it's like a, a threat to the entire humanity if we cross 1.1.5 degree so there are irreversible like the earth is been stable earth has been stable for like thousands of years only reason for that is the temperature the earth average temperature was between plus and minus 1 degree uh, it was stable we did not see many yeah uh, there are again um, uh, there are again stories uh there are again many many things which i don't want to tell um that you know it's like a, it's not real and all um because we also had a 1.5 temperature before many things are there um i don't want to tell about that but what i wanted to tell is the study says earth is stable uh, for last earth is stable for last thousands of years only because the average temperature of the earth was plus or minus 1 degree now it is not going to stable it is not stable uh it's only because uh the we have crossed that um the boundary of 1 degree and that's the reason you see this uh uncertain things which are happening now when we cross this 1.5 degree so there are again i'm telling you un- re- irreversible changes which we are going to we're going to see and we we cannot imagine how the world looks like uh, in next 30 years so it's a serious concern um so we all have to work towards it's not a one person like everyone is taking um every government is trying their best uh, to to not to cross that threshold and obviously when you cross that the the upper caps and the lower caps what we have in earth the, the which is ice right so it will melt down and then the coastal areas um and all of those areas like islands and all they i mean they they not be there at all uh, because of the rise in the sea level so there are many more irreversible consequences so it's it's only because the emission emission of the carbon so why majority con- con- contribution is uh, energy so the 
it's because why this happened is carbon dioxide emission so where is this carbon dioxide emission is getting used so, so how how it is getting emitted because we use fossil fuels right we use coal we use we use um, uh, oil right petrol diesel and all so that for the energy purpose 73% again here in 73% 30% is for transportation and then there are many other um so yeah so so what happened is we all have promised uh, the many most of the countries not all there are a few countries they they did not even show up in the in the ipcc uh, meter like which happened in this year itself in glasgow uh, glasgow so our government indian government has promised that we reach to this net zero net zero is where the amount of carbon dioxide you emit you consume that back from the environment uh, so we reach that by um 2070 because india is a i'm talking about only india india is a developing country all of sudden we cannot uh, we cannot stop using using energy right so if we stop uh, using the fossil fuels emission of fossil fuels again uh, we will not have the economy so it's a developing country so we promise a, a realistic uh, a deadline uh, which we don't know how things will will move on by 2070 other developed countries usa uk and all they promise that they will reach by 2050 um, however uh, government of india said that they they reach um, they 50% of the energy what what we see here uh, so we, they they convert into renewable energies by 2030 that's a realistic expectation what we have and we are, you you see right there are there are many electric cars electric vehicle many things are coming on it's only because the government has taken initiatives at the same time we as an individual government is doing their job we as an individual it's it's our responsibility to say the only that this is the biggest challenge what we have and the the only way i i i use this because i am good at data science i know things people are really fascinated about learning many things and data science big data and all of those things i try to convey my message so you you all have to be conveying the message what are the mitigation measures so first thing is behavior change there are many things um and then there are technology aspects also there are people uh, these companies they they are working uh, massively they are com- big companies they they have invest- invest- invested a lot um on these companies uh, so where what they are doing is they directly consuming like the tree uh, captures the carbon dioxide right for um, the photosynthesis for all of the uh, things right so for for it's like a fuel for for tree carbon dioxide right so it, these companies they are actually capturing the carbon dioxide from the air um of course they are they are just a, they started and they are not like a that scale the amount what we are emitting um so we all have to support so the main thing is um our behaviors so we have to spread the word again i i would like to thank you defi for giving me this opportunity uh, to spread my word to uh, spread the word about uh, climate change speak up at work i everywhere wherever i go at at my place I talk about climate change in fact i'm giving session on this uh support sustainable agriculture so this is me i have a farm in um, in, in karnataka north karnataka kalburgi uh, so i have 10 acres of land so we we we, we started with two acres of uh, agriculture uh, farming uh, which is like a organic farming um so these are the behavior changes these are my kids plant garden so although there is a small place outside of my outside my house we plant gardens so and then this is a little contradictory but start to uh move towards um plant based diet so 60% of the agriculture land obviously it is getting used uh you know in a livestock uh, like you know li- livestock placing them uh you know in grooming them right so better to go for this is a contradictory statement but i have given the references um so better to go for plant based diets cycling walking use the shade services plant tree and there are many things so you as an individual so you can i mean i have promised myself um every year whatever i am using every year uh, so i am planning to reduce whatever the I, we all emit carbon dioxide i have a bike but i have a car uh, so how do i reduce this carbon emission so by using shared services so this year i have to go to office i'm going to office uh, however yeah so transportation obviously there is one of the thing which most of the like i prefer work from home because for the climate change i support home however there are other issues but i use shared service so i go to metro i, I go to railway station and then use the shared services i can drive i can 
I can easily afford, I can easily uh, drive a car, I can ride a bike. So I have no problem at all. Um, I can save the time. However, I still use the shared services. Um, so I have promised myself that every year I reduce whatever I'm using right now. Maybe I switch to renewable energy. I have not shifted it to renewable energies. I'm trying uh, at my village. Um, we have a solar um, uh, outer side of the uh, our farm is everything is solar supplied. So at farm at village we have, but in town where I'm staying in, I'm switching towards uh, solar. Um, I'm talking about myself only. It all it should start with you. So we all have to take a oath that we reduce at least by 20 percent, 30 percent every year by switching to renewable energies. So this is the workshop which I take generally. Um, about climate change and AI, and there are many things are there here. I was I, I I go to colleges, I spread about AI and also spread about climate change. So these are the basic things. Um, uh, so if you are if you are a like already a data scientist, if you're already working, so contribute. Like there are challenges like Kaggle, you find the actual data. So get insights. Try to find out. Contribute to some of the frameworks. There are people who are actually working. Um, working on the, these companies, they are they are community like DeFi is a community, uh, so there are communities like Climate Change AI. They are actually spreading the word about climate change, um, and and how AI can be. This is like an intersection of AI and climate change. So I am also part of that group. So start start thinking about this. You are all technologists, right? So so of course as a personal individual behavior, you all have to change. We all have to change. Every year we have to reduce the amount of Carbon dioxide we emit every year by using all, all of the services, energy services. We have to think about it. We have to realize about it and reduce. How can you reduce as an individual? And that's one thing. The second thing is if you already know technologies and contribute for the better cause. So these are the companies, the open open climate fix, climate change AI, they are a company, they have frameworks. You can, if you're a good coder, so you can contribute to these, these communities and then uh, work for the better cause. So it's, it's it's the government can do. Government is doing their job. Each and every country's government is doing their job. It's all our own understanding. So that's what I just want to say. These are the open source data sets. These things will be shared with you. Uh, there are some companies, startups you can work. So yeah. So I think that's all I had. So I, I think almost I crossed more than one hour, man. So I'll be more than happy to take questions. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we, uh, uh, but 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 to be very honest, uh, I, I see community members are interacting and they're sharing various things around climate change. Um, yeah, I think uh, when you when you're saying even I was uh, retrospecting if you know where all I could save on my end, and at at DeFi, yeah, we we take up initiatives and we try to support climate change. But certainly, things that you have pointed out just goes on to show that it's never going to be enough. All of us need to try to go that extra mile because it's a big problem out in front of us. And one comment that I want to probably pick up is something that Sherry has mentioned. I'll stop sharing the screen, but yeah. So she said, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm 64 years of age, retired, and I'm a theoretical scientist. That's what I'm trying to do. And I'm also educating myself again uh, and applied mathematics. So, uh, and uh, people started interacting about, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really, um, it kind of gives hope that people are so proactive towards you know, taking this too seriously. Honestly, uh, yeah, even um, so I have, I've lived in cities where I could relate to the fact that we were literally on the verge of actually feeling the impact. I mean, uh, I don't know how many of us realize it, but we can we can actually see the effects of climate change already. Europe is facing it aggressively right now. Um, cities like Delhi, Bangalore, I mean, these are cities in India. They face it uh, pretty proactively. So yeah, the earlier we start, the better it is. Um, I'll, I'll 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 start picking up questions. Thanks a lot for that uh, wonderful presentation. And I'm, uh, you know, you you meant you thanked DeFi a few times, but I would say that I'm not sure if I can express it very uh, aptly. But we are genuinely very thankful to you for sharing your time. So uh, thanks a lot. I'll uh, pick up a few questions. Okay, so you I think um, you answered this briefly, but um, uh, so let me pick this one. This is by Pratish. He says he asks, is there any free infra uh, to practice big data for free? Yeah, so community edition of uh, community edition of Databricks is very good. Um, so you can just type community uh, edition of Databricks. You create account, free account. They provide you pre-installed 
uh, Spark server. Like you have a server for in server, you have to install Spark, Apache Spark, all of these frameworks. So Databricks provides you pre-installed 16 GB server, so you can easily use that. It's like a Jupyter notebook collab. It's more powerful than Jupyter notebook, um, so you can use that. That's one option. Um, so the second option is <coughs> if you are using Google, yeah. So you, they provide you 300. Uh, dollars credits you can use their google google's infrastructure third option is you can use um, um you can of course use uh, amazon ec2 instance the single instance where you have to install manually uh, spark and all you have to install manually um so yeah the other places yeah cloud yes, also provides yeah okay sorry go ahead no, no, please go ahead i think your your answer is more important yeah please. so yeah so cloud era also provides some of the community additions there are many frameworks uh, there are many distributions so they provide, uh, but famous one is Databricks. I prefer Databricks because um, it's, it's very powerful and it's very stable. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, I think those are a few resources. I'll also, I'll, we'll also try to put their links uh, as we uh, put this, you know, uh, on DeFi's website. Um, so Pratish had also asked if there are any, um, you know, if there are any paid or free courses that you can leverage and if this will be available on DeFi, I mean, if there will be a course, for big data on DeFi. So I think, yeah, you can uh, see it soon. Um, yeah. yeah, kudos to contributions from uh, uh, Ladley. We'll, you'll be seeing us from, uh, seeing it from us. So hit that like sure. if you uh, like this announcement, but yeah. Uh, this is a question from Rushab. He asked, do uh, do we get that much free usage of EC2 in EC2? Yeah. And can we use Docker for the libraries? This is slightly contextual, but if you would answer it. Yeah, we can use Docker. So Docker, um... If you just go to Apache Spark document installation, so they have a Docker image, so it, it like a, you can spin up the Docker um, easily. It, it, everything is there in, um, in Apache Spark official document. We'll share the link, so you can easily um, use the Docker. So on, on coming to EC2, yeah. So if you are if your objective is just to explore some of these, so EC2 single instance is enough mm, to explore to learn, but. Uh, to, to practice, to make use of actual processing massive amount of data. So you need a um, paid version of uh, EC2 servers. But micro instance, what the free instance, what they provide for one year. So which is enough uh, to get start Spark. But again, I would say, so if you are planning to explore, if you are a data scientist, uh, you love notebook. Uh, so go for community edition of Databricks. So if you just type one, Data, or maybe we'll share the URL how to create um, the community edition of account. So it's very simple. Uh, in 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 one minute, you like in in what, what happens in if you're using AC EC2. So you have to first of all create launch instance, create PM file, and then connect through SSH. And between you know whatever you write, it may get lost. So whereas um, code might get lost, right? So whereas uh, and then you have to stop the instance. And the IP, when you start again, the IP will change. Uh, if you want to use a, a fixed IP, again, you'll have to pay. So there are many complications. Again, once you have the EC2 server, you also have to install um, the Apache Spark on, on top of that. So instead, go for Databricks. Uh, Databricks, um, they are the pioneers. They are the people who developed Apache Spark. So they have a very advanced functions. Um, go for uh, pre-installed. They, they provide you 16 GB server. Uh, with pre-installed, um, pre-installed um, Spark on top of uh, on it. Okay, okay. Um, and there's a follow-up question from Pratish that I'll quickly pick up. Uh, Pratish is asking, Cloudera Hortonworks will not have online environment like Databricks. I mean, uh, is that yeah. correct? I mean, yeah. Okay. So I think they have a complete edition Cloudera, as far as I know. Uh, but hmm. yeah, but Databricks is 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 is, is, is there. I use uh, frequently. <laughs> Okay, there is a highly contextual question. I do not know if you can uh, answer this. So, um, and I'm picking this because DataTalks is a Data Talks club. The folks at uh, DTC are very good friends. And we listed the bootcamp recently, did the data engineering bootcamp. Not sure if you got a chance to look at it. Did you? Uh, somebody's asking your views on it. Uh, no, no, I haven't uh, looked at it. Yeah. 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 So I think you will have to wait for it. Um, but yeah, I'll probably pick another question that uh, was asked. And uh, there's something that was, which was mostly around climate change. Okay, so again, that is something that Sherry had asked. I'll, okay, I'm 
navigating through comments because there are a lot of them but yeah okay um sorry um okay so she is asking uh, what's your views on uh, okay one second ah is this the one have a question okay so i think this is something that is which is slightly contextual uh, if sherry is still there if you could probably clarify in terms of what you wanted to ask but yeah she was asking how did you come to this conclusion uh, around maybe something that you mentioned around climate change so yeah in case you can relate to it uh, yeah i do not know i think it's slightly contextual if she's there maybe she could answer but yeah i think we are uh, whatever i have used like everything is uh, is i am not uh, i'm not the person who articulated everything is i've given the reference from where um, i'm talking about for whatever it is i mean the information yeah. we are sharing here yeah. there is a source yeah. for it, valid source for it mm-hmm. yeah um also um there were a few questions if you could share the recording and also recording and the resources i think we'll share them across um we'll put out i think largely i'll probably you know he'll share the links with us and then we'll put yeah. it out there on the website and the comments oh got it sorry rishab is clarifying i think that was for intended for a fellow uh, attendee i mean fellow community member not for you i'm sorry but yeah okay so looking at it okay fair enough cool so i think we are towards the end of the, que- the end of the session uh, it was a pretty insightful one uh, and i think we should definitely do more of these where we can have uh, i think the community can expect us to come together more often where we will uh, we will try to do various things because frankly um, it has been a sheer pleasure hosting latter today because i think the, the ones who have you know uh, attended the session from the beginning who were there around when he was introducing himself and when i uh, shared about him briefly they would know that the kind of passion he carries and it aligns highly in terms of what we are trying to do at defi so uh, let's let's see uh, we'll try to come up with more resources for all of you thank you everyone for being with us today it was a uh, lovely catching up with you all on the saturday you'll see us next evening uh, next saturday evening where we'll be talking about a very interesting topic it's around uh, using data science in the field of grocery retail media so it's by a business leader uh, and it's it's highly centric towards understanding the business side of things because as a data scientist it's important to understand even that as well so uh, we'll see you all soon and thank you again ladley for uh, you know delivering this awesome session we are highly grateful to you thank and you. there are a few uh, you know i mean words of uh, gratitude that i just wanted to put across that people have been mentioning that they really love the session it's it's again difficult because there are a few of them but yeah just putting them across so thank you everyone for being there um and um, yeah yeah okay can can we ask ladley to join our disc, to, to join the discord yeah i'll share the link with him over uh, you know personal chat so thanks so that is defi's discord by the way all of you who are not there i'll i'll share a link quickly because it's bitly link uh, it's a very easy to remember link it's bit.ly uh, backslash ai hyphen discord so for those of you who are not there you can join us using this link you can interact with various other learners and community members who are trying to give back and add to each other we keep on seeing this message of love so I think I'm sorry for this LinkedIn user bit, slightly tricky. But yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you all soon. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you.